All right, so looking at the screwdriver, the first step is you got to decide how to model this. There's a couple different approaches. There's not one that's necessarily better than others, um, but I will show you um, what I think is the easiest way to model this, uh, which may not be the most intuitive way. So anyways, let's start. So the first thing, um, and you should remember this from lab, is that this is a, a lathe part. You make this on a lathe. And so this is a prime candidate for a revolve feature. Um, so you could either make a cut revolve or a um, normal revolve, revolve blast base. So like I said, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways. The first way is gonna just be, I'm gonna start with a normal revolve blast base. And so I'm gonna take these dimensions here um, that define the part, define the machine cuts, and I'm gonna revolve those. Um, instead of modeling the hex shape, the hexagon, that's like a one inch between flats, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this uh, an outer diameter of like um, something bigger than than one inch. So we'll, we'll see how we do that. I've never done this before, so I'm making it up as I go. So sketch, sketch, center line. Of course, on, let's put that at my uh, origin. Now let's start. It's a little chamfer. This also has uh, a chamfer, and then I'm going to do my quarter inch diameter hole, and then there's a, a bigger hole, and then there's an even bigger hole. This is not really to scale, so let's just putting let's just start putting some dimensions on. So if this is 0.25. I said I was going to make this outside 1.5. Let's go back to my PDF here. 0.8, half inch deep. 0.563. All right, so 563. 0.8. Half inch deep. So this I know this can come all the way to here. Just connecting these points right here to make that a closed shape. Okay, so now my overall length from here to here is four. It looks odd. That's okay, don't worry about that. My second drill angle is, or my second drill diameter is 0.386. Um, this angle here is 118 degrees included angle. So this should be 108 divided by 2. Um, this should not be parallel. So let's get rid of that. This is my tapered diameter. So this can always kind of make that look a little bit better right now. But this one and this one are indeed parallel because those are both the bottom of the drill. Drill bits have a, uh, an angle at the bottom of them, a little point. And so that's that surface right there and there. Okay, so depth is 2.39, 3.38. So let's go 2.39. And then from here to here is 3.38. Again, looks skewed, so just bring it back, make it look better. All right, so um, these are very small chamfers here, so let's, let's go ahead and define those. Those are called out on the drawing right here, 40 thou by 45 degrees. Here is 45 degrees. This from right here to here is 45 degrees. And let's say from here to forty thousand. So those are my those are my chamfers. I have to do this angle here. So this angle is um, 18 degrees, right? Uh, yeah, 18 degrees plus or minus a half a degree. And so this, this taper is called out from the point of the hex, um, which is fairly annoying because I don't really have a spot to define that to. So uh, how do I want to do that? This is what I'm going to do. Let's do this. So from here, 
I'm going to draw a hex. I'm going to make this hex construction. So the entire thing is, is just a construction to help me draw this. This has one inch um, between flats. These two points are vertical. And so what this gives me, and this, this gives me a line, a point. Um, so this from here to this end is one inch. That fully defines this hex. And what I'm going to say is that this taper has to intersect that point. So it's kind of a funky way to do this, but um, it fully defines it and it's accurate. And so now what I have is basically the, the net closed shape for my screwdriver. And I could do a features revolve boss base, um, select my center line to revolve, and boom, there we go. But you know that that doesn't look how you want it to look. So now I'm going to cut the hex profile. So I select this back face, click sketch, um, click the little hex tool here, do the same thing. I'm going to draw my, um, my flats here, one inch. I'll, I will make this at this point vertical just to make sure it's black and fully defined. And now I'm going to go features, extrude, or not extrude boss, I'm going to do extrude cut. And at first glance, you're going to say, well, like, that doesn't do what I want it to do because that like cuts away material inside, right? It's not what I want to do. So if I go back into my extrude, I can say flip side to cut. And what that does is that's going to take my sketch profile and see this little arrow on the pointing to the outside. So that says everything on the outside is going to cut away, which basically gives me my, my net shape for my screwdriver, which is what I want. That is one approach to how you, how you could do that. Um, Again, then you would cut the, the, the hex in the middle of the key here, same, same kind of way. You would come in here with this hex tool, come in here, call this at 0.25, and then you would you know, fully define this and this as being vertical, features, extrude cut, not doing outside. No, this is just a normal through all. And then there's your hex on the inside of the, of the part there. So you got a chamfer there. You got to do um, switch. You know, we could uh, maybe add that back into my original sketch here. If, uh, doing something like something like this, you can kind of cut that shape. So let's say let's make this like uh, 0 0.1. I don't know what I want to do. Try again. Sure. And um, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to cut this little champ right here, this 70 thou by 45 degrees. Um, so essentially what I'm trying to do is, so I'll, I'll, I'll find that point here that I was using earlier, because um, basically that's the edge. So I want this point to line up with that edge coincident. Um, so I'm using that hex as, a, as that I drew as a reference to define that. And now you see I got a nice little chamfer out here, so that looks a lot better. Um, so that's basically the overall, the overall shape. I think there's a couple small chamfers that I got to do on the back side of this cap here. So that would be this 10 thou chamfer right there. So I could do a little sketch chamfer, 10 thou, um, click there and there. Click the check. Now I have those two chamfers there. Um, so you have a cross drill you still have to do, but that is one approach to model that, that screwdriver. So real quickly, let's do another approach. I'll show you two different ways. So I started with a revolve and then I did an extrude cut. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a extrude. make this and this vertical. Um, so features, extrude boss base, four. All right, so there, there we are. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specifically start from my right plane because the right plane co uh, is coincident with the corners, right? So if I look, the, the right plane goes through the corners and I know because I'm trying to plan ahead that strategically I have a dimension from the corner 
of the hex, which is down here at the bottom, this one inch dimension. So by sketching on that right plane, it's going to make my life a little easier. Um, so now we draw a circle there, or that's not definitely not a circle. Um, definitely not a circle. I'm going to draw a little triangle here. So this is somewhat of a of a more advanced um, process because what I'm doing is I'm creating multiple closed shapes. So see how this this line is coincident with the top of my hex. So I could I could draw that one inch. I could define the um, 18 degrees. And now this triangle is fully defined. Uh, remember this is a half inch back, and it's 0.800 from here. Oops, not what I wanted. Point eight, collinear, collinear. So now, like theoretically, I can do a revolve cut, and I could select both of those surfaces, and you can kind of see how I'm like cutting away material just as you would on a lathe. Um, so that would be how you do the taper, and that would be how you do the surface here on the back. Um, you know, likewise, you can continue. Uh, removing materials. You could do it with revolve cuts, but this time I'll do it with the hole wizard. And let's do a couple holes. So let's do um, all drill sizes. And I'm looking for a size uh, 563. And that's going to be down 2.39. So 563 is a 9 sixteenths. Um, 2.63. Is that right? Mm. Mm, 2.39. 2.39 positions, drop that right in the middle there, boom, hit the check, boom. So I've now removed material. I'll do a little cross section so you can kind of see cross sectionally what that looks like. There's the drill angle that we talked about earlier. Um, so that's the bigger drill. Um, I don't actually want to turn that section on right now. Next, I'm going to do is select that same surface, do the same thing, hole wizard. Now, instead of uh, a 916 drill, I'm going to select a 386, and that's going to go down 3.38. So 386 is a size W. That's going to be down 3.38 positions. And I'm going to come and click the same exact position. So you can see for the first bit of that cut, it's actually not going to cut through anything. But you see it goes a lot deeper than the first hole. So then I could go check, cut a little cross section. So you see my two drills, two different drill depths. All right, so now um, we got our two drills, two different depths. Um, let me turn off my section view. And now I'm going to do my, my third drill, which I'm going to do from this side. It doesn't really matter what side you do it from, but it's a little bit easier. In this one, I'm going to do a quarter inch. All right, uh, through all positions, put it right there in the center. Boom. So now I got all my holes. Um, I can come in here and add my chamfers. So let's do a chamfer of uh, 10 thou. Instead of clicking these two edges, here's a little trick. I can unselect those two edges. And if I just click the surface, it'll grab both edges. That's a nice little. This little trick of the trade here. Then over here, come in, chamfer, 40 thou, same thing. Let's add those two chamfers right there. Um, I also need to select or sketch the hex, so we'll do the hex. From here to here, 0.25. It's always good practice to fully define your sketch, even though this doesn't necessarily matter. You can put the little anchor that vertical features extrude cut through all. That's fine. Boom. All right. So now I'm looking pretty good again. The only thing that I'm missing that I can see off top hand is the, is the cross drill up here. But then there is uh, this chamfer on this side. Now, again, this is a this is a tricky chamfer to draw. Um, specifically because I can't use the chamfer tool. If I come in and do a chamfer tool and try to click this edge, like this is not correct. And you could tell that is not correct by looking at the picture. Um, 
it's only it's an intermittent cut. So it's more of a, a lathe cut or a extrude or a um, revolve cut, not a not a direct chamfer. So the way you would do that is you'd select your right plane, make sure it intersects that corner and sketch, sketch, and you would start drawing from this corner down and you would draw your chamfer in a two dimensional plane intersecting that corner. Um, 70 thou, 45 degrees. Uh, you need a center line to revolve. And once you have that, now you can go to features, revolve, cut. Um, and then that is your chamfer. So that would be the easiest and, and most efficient way to do the chamfer. So doing the cross drill should be simple. You just select that face, sketch, draw a circle, extrude, cut all the way through, make sure it's fully defined. You could also use whole wizard, but otherwise. Um, so you see here, like the basic principle here, I started off with my extrude. I did a couple cut revolves. I used whole wizard three different times to cut the holes to the center of the part. I then added my, my chamfers and my, yeah, all my chamfers essentially, and the, and the hex here in the middle. Um, so that's one approach. The other approach is to The other approach here, much less features um, to get the same result, but I started with one basic revolve. Um, I had to use some reference dimensions to get there. Uh, then I did the cut revolve to get the net shape. And I could tell that this chamfer is off, but I'm not going to worry about that. And then my last step would be to do the, the hex here. So a couple different ways to do it. Um, it's basically all extrudes and revolves. Um, hope this helps.